Hey, I want to show you how you can use row operations to actually find the inverse of a matrix. And the idea is, is kind of cool. What you do is, suppose you want to find the inverse of, say, this matrix. This is a 3 by 3 matrix. Suppose you want to find the inverse of this matrix. What you would first do is create an augmented matrix that would be a 3 by 6. And in general, if you're going to have an n by n matrix that you're trying to find the inverse of, you're going to want to have n rows in the augmented matrix and 2n columns. Because what you do is you take the a itself, the matrix that you're trying to find the inverse of, and then you um, augment it with the identity matrix, which remember just has ones along the diagonal starting from the upper left down to the lower right, and zeros everywhere else. That's the identity matrix. And now perform basic row operations again and again and again to transform this augmented matrix, which has A augmented with the identity, to the identity matrix augmented with something else. So the idea is to get all the ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else here using those basic row operations that we've talked about. And then it turns out whatever's left here on the other side of this augmented matrix is in fact the, ident is, is in fact the inverse for the original matrix A. That's so cool, so awesome. And I want to show you an example with this example. And so the first thing you do is you write an augmented matrix where notice I copied A exactly. And then here I augment it with the identity matrix. So I put 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. OK, awesome. And now the goal is just to do row operations and to transform this side to look like this side. So the idea here, just to say it in kind of words, is I want to get zeros all underneath here. And then what I want to do is I want to get a zero here and a zero here and then get uh, a zero here and a zero here. So And then just divide by whatever's there to make them all ones. Now, the tricky thing is there's kind of a little bit of an order to it. You, you don't want to do some of these steps kind of intermediately because you want to make sure first you get zeros all over here so that if you use things later, you're not going to disrupt things over here. It's a little tricky, but we'll see it actually in practice. So how are we going to start this? So the way we're going to start this, let's put this off to the side for a second. So here's where we're going to start the story. And now we're going to do row operations. And so what do we do first? Well, the first thing we're going to do is just keep that first row exactly as it is. So notice that the first, the first row, I'm just going to keep exactly as it is, just copy it down. But now what I'm going to do, I'm going to perform a row operation. I'm going to replace the second row by the first row plus 2 times the second row. And why? Well, check it out. If I multiply this row by 2, then this becomes a negative 2. And when I add it to the first row, that's going to produce a 0. And if we keep doing this now, so I multiply this by 2, and I add it to this, that's going to give me a 6. If I multiply this by 2 and add it to that, that's going to be negative 2 plus 1 is going to be negative 1, and so forth. And you continue down the pike, and then there you have it. So I just did this all the way through, even on the other side of the dots, of course. Great. And then while I'm here, I want to actually transform and change the, the third row. And I'm going to replace the third row by uh, row 1 plus negative uh, 2 times, and this should be row 3. That's a little typo there. It's OK. It turns out you can easily make mistakes on these things, by the way. It is so easy to make mistakes. Trust me, I know. But that's a 3. Because check it out. You see, if I multiply this by negative 2 and add it to this, that becomes a 0. And if I multiply this by negative 2, that becomes um, a negative 8. And when I add 4, I get negative 4, and so forth down the pike. So we go right through and just do that ar ar arithmetic. And now we get an augmented matrix where we've actually done a couple of of actual row, uh, row operations. But notice that the important thing is I now have zeros here. That's what I'm shooting for, OK? So let's keep going. I don't need this one anymore. I'm now going to just focus on this one. And what am I going to do next? Well, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to now try to work on getting a 0 right here. That's my next goal. So how am I going to do that? 
Well, the way I'm going to do that, turns out, is going to be to just add the third row to the first row. Now notice how cool this is. When I add 0 to 2, I'm still going to get that 2, so nothing's going to change there. And then when I add these two things, notice they add to give 0. And so there's the 0 that I was really after. And then when I have to continue this process, I have to now add this and this. And so now I'm going to get a 2 up there. And you continue this process through here. Add these two things, I get a 2. Add these two things, I get a 0. Add these two things, I get negative 2. No problem. OK, great. Now, what am I going to do next? Well, the next thing I want to do here, and by the way, there is not like a next step. It's anything that you want to do just in order to make sure you're following row operations and do what kind of you want to do. So don't get kind of hung up in saying this, there is a next step. This is just how I'm doing it, but you can do it lots of different ways. I'm now going to actually, while I'm here, uh, replace row 2 by adding row 3 and row 2. So just add these two. Now, why would I do that? Well, it's going to have no effect here, so that's good, of course, and that's the point of this. And here, the effect is it'll make that a 2, which is a little bit smaller. But here's why I really like it. When I add these two things, I get a free 0. So I actually kind of sneak in there and get a free 0. Add these two things, I get a 2, 2, and this is negative 2. 2, 2, negative 2. And then finally, what I want here, of course, is a 0 right there. So how do I get that? The way I'm going to do that is by doing nothing right now. I just faked you out. But this is where we are right now. So we made some progress. And you can see slowly this is beginning to look like an identity matrix. Lots of zeros, and the diagonal is still the diagonal. So awesome. All right. So now where do we go from here? What would be a good, good next step? Well, there's lots of possibilities. I guess the, the no thing I noticed is that these are all even, and these are all even. So just while I, I think about it, let me just clean those up. And how do you get rid of all those things? I can certainly divide or multiply through by, by 2 or uh, divide by 2. Multiply through by half or divide by 2, whatever you want to say. So let's just take half of r1. And if I take half of r1, of course, everything just becomes 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, negative 1. Similarly here, I could take half of r2 and put that in the place of the new r2. That's totally allowed. 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, negative 1. 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, negative 1. Great. And now I really want to get that 0 there. So how do I do that? Well, check out what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 2 times the second row and add it to the third row. 2 times 2 is 4. And when I add it to the negative 4, I get 0. And that's exactly what I want. And notice that by doing that, nothing is disruptive here because everything in sight is 0. 0 times 2 is 0 plus 0 is 0. So we're good to go. And now uh, 2 times 2 is 4 plus negative 4 is 0. That's exactly what I want. And then 2 times 0 is, is 0 uh, plus uh, 1 is 1. And we keep doing this. 2 times this is 4 and 1 is 5. Uh, 2 times this is 4 plus, one is, is four, uh, plus 0 is 4. And 2 times this is uh, negative 4. Uh, minus 2 is negative 6. So now look how close we are. This is really, it's amazing we got here this fast. This almost looks like the identity matrix. The only thing left is to get rid of that one. And notice that the way to do that is to take this and subtract that. And notice that nothing else gets affected. 1 minus 0 will still be 1. 0 minus 0 will still be 0. But now we're going to have what we want. So that's going to be the very last step, which I'll just show it to you. We take um, r1 and subtract r3, or negative, three, negative r3 plus r1. And notice that when we subtract, this minus that is 1. This minus that is 0. This minus that is 0. This minus that is negative 4. This minus that is negative 4. And this, negative 1 minus negative 6, is 6 minus 1, which is 5. Great. So notice that this is the identity matrix, which means that what's on this side, in fact, has to be the inverse of the original matrix that we started with. Really cool, just using uh, row operations and being really, really careful with all the, the um, algebra, all the arithmetic. Anyway, enjoy thinking about this interesting way of using row operations to find the inverse of a matrix, and I'll see you soon.